Welcome back to the Family, Home, and Social Science Research Support Center at Brigham Young University. I'm going to be showing you some basic um, ways to deal with SEM in R. I'm going to be using the Love On library um, because I find that it's the easiest and most intuitive. So, um, again, we are going to be using files from in here and if you need to find them go download them here but right now we will be using this for SEM basics and there may be some differences there may be like it may look different on the website, but you should be able to find it. Um, I hope. I don't know what the future will hold. I'll open it up just so we can see it if I need it, but I'm going to be mostly typing it out because I find that it helps me teach it better and it helps you to learn more if you type it out. So I'm going to be, I'll run up, run these libraries really fast because it's simple. I'm going to get my data in, although. You might have it already up. It's easy to get your data in. These are SEM specific libraries that I like to do. So if they don't work, then you might have to come in here and say install packages Levon, like that, and run that. I already have it. If you do need to do that, though, pause this video and run the install packages. But for right now, I'm going to teach you about some of the cool features in R using the Levon package. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you is a confirmatory factor analysis. So you'll find that all of these models follow a similar um, style, I guess. First, you have to specify the model then you have to fit the model, then you have to look at a summary of the model. So it's kind of hard, but and I'll show you here what we're about to do. So we're going to specify the model and then fit the model, and then we can look at the output of the model, and then we can run this. That'll show you the diagram of the model too, but I'll cover that up so that we can actually run it. So first let's look at the data. So this is the data that we're looking at. We're going to be using relationship, we're going to be doing a confirmatory factor analysis with these four RSAT items creating a latent variable. So first let's specify the model. So I'll just call it the rel sat model. You can call it whatever you want. This word could be anything. It could be your first name, it could be whatever you want. I'll call it rel sat model. And then a single tick so it's like a quotation mark, but it's just a single one. And say satisfaction, that's the name of your latent variable, could be anything, whatever you want, equals tilde. And here's where you have to give the exact names case sensitive of the variables that you want in your confirmatory factor analysis. So the indicators of your factor analysis of your latent variable, rsat1, rsat2, rsat3, and r, see I would have messed that up, plus rsat4. So that specifies the model. It shows up here. You can see it's just a string, which is just a sentence, word, whatever. Um, and then I'm going to go fit and then CFA rel sat model so that's the same word that I just used there I do here as well and I go data equals relationship that's the data set that I want to be working with we'll say missing equals full, ma full information maximum likelihood fit the model could take some time. This was a pretty simple model, so it fit it pretty quick. Then I'm going to say summary my fit. 
and then I mean to just show you simplest form is it could give you this um, Levon 0.6 ended normally after 26 iterations there's your estimator your number of free parameters there's the observations um, come down here first one is always set to 1 then there's the factor loading so I would say this factor loads pretty well but I don't actually know um, it created a mean of 0 because that's what latent variables do here's the intercepts for those four indicators and the variances so I'm going to push up on my keyboard bring this back and we'll show you some different options so you can ask for standardized you can ask for fit statistics um, it's fit dot measures if it tried to do what you what it just tried to do to me is put this at one word and give you parentheses make sure that it's fit dot measures equals true and I'm also going to ask for the R square equals true So now I have an R square of how much the model explained all of those things. If we come up here, okay, there was the line we just ran. So this is all the same, 1250 test statistic, but now it gives me a CFI, a TLI. So this model has pretty good fit. Um, RMSEA, you know, it's a little high, but the probability that RMSEA is less than 0 0.05 is not very good. Um, SRMR is decent. Here's my unstandardized and I should have standardized estimates too that I'm not seeing. So hold on one sec. Let me figure this out. Yeah, so these over here, the standardized dot all, those are your standardized regression coefficients and the standardized means and standardized variances. It's in this all column. All right, so that's your very first um, structural equation model that you wanted to run in R. And then here, I copied and pasted it because there's a whole bunch of stuff that could be good to add and it's right here um, creating a diagram of it there it is and I asked for standardized to be true so those are my standardized estimates and as you can see they do match those right there um, the model equals fit Fit is what I called it, remember? Um, fit is what I called that right there. Um, node options, I want a shape box, Helvetica font, because it's the closest to Times New Roman. Um, color equals gray, put my coefficients on and make them standardized. Okay, so that's your very basic confirmatory factor analysis. Now to save myself some typing I'm going to walk you through the syntax of things but not necessarily type it all out. So a general SEM you would have some model that you specify and again this is a less than and then a dash because that's the assign and then you start some string which is the quotation mark but it's just a single one I like to put it over different lines so that it's easy so you could just go model and then move it down and that'll work and again if you're working with R markdown then you just create a new section by saying insert R and it does that if you're using an R script file, then it's the same. It just, it, everything is code. So you can use that. That's up to you. I don't go through all the 
ins and outs of our studio here. But okay, so model latent variables, you specify a latent variable with equals and tilde, and then you add everything together. Okay. Regression paths, you have your dependent variable on the left and exogenous on the right, separated by a plus. So dependent variable, all your independent variables. And then if you need any error correlations, then that's a double tilde. So regression path is single tilde, correlation is double tilde, or covariance, and a factor is equals um, tilde. So this would be in M plus, this would be by, in M plus this would be on, and in M plus this would be with. So if you're familiar with M plus, then there you go. Again, I'm going to specify a model. I'm going to fit a model, which this has to have the same name as that. Tell it what data to go with and what estimator to use. And then summary fit has to be the same name as that. And standardize equals true fit measures and R square, because I think those are useful. And then Levon plot, that's just the same thing it was. In the previous example, run it. It gives you some good stuff. That one's not significant, but chi-square is often not, although it should be, technically. Some pretty high CFI and TLI. Um, you could write those down to compare other models to it. RMSEA is better than the last model, now that we've added some other things. Um, remember, those are your unstandardized, those are your standardized. There's our diagram if you want the standardized coefficients on it. So we've got age, gender, and satisfaction all predicting education. Um, and we're explaining basically nothing of education, which is a bummer, but you know, that's kind of the way it is. Um, when you want to include bootstrapping in your model, I'm just going to use the same model that I already have specified, even though I don't technically need it. Um, it would be the exact same thing as this. You would specify this model the exact same, but then you have to set a seed because you're dealing with bootstrapping, so it's random, so you have to give it a number so that it's repeatable. Fit equals model, missing equals FIML, and then standard error equals bootstrap, and bootstrap equals however many you want. This is 100 for like simplicity, but you really should have like 5,000. We'll just go 100 because it's fast. We'll run it. See, it takes a little while. Still going. And it finishes. And then you could say summary of fit. And I'll put it down here so I don't have to run it again. Summary of fit. And it gives it to me. Now, Bootstrapping is usually done with mediation, and I didn't include any mediation in that, so there wasn't really any point of doing bootstrapping. And if you don't understand bootstrapping, then go look up mediation and understand why you need to bootstrap to estimate your standard errors correctly. If you want modification indices, you have to have already fitted or fit a model. You can name it whatever you want, and you can ask mod indices and fit. And remember, fit is SEM over there. Um, you can also filter by a specific type of modification indices. So if you only want to request error correlations, then you do M, MI options equals the double tilde, because the double tilde asks for covariances, remember, uh, when you're specifying your model. So we'll run that. And so in this model, here are all the different modification indices that you could have. There's the two that you might want to correlate, and that's, I think this is how much your standard error, your chi-square would change. Usually we don't want to change anything that's bigger than like 10, so that's not actually that helpful, but if you did have an error, you did have a model that required a lot of um, how are we doing? Wow, it's a long video. If you did have a model that did require some respecification through modification indices, this is how you would do it. 
if you want to test measurement invariance, um, I'm not sure what's going on there. I think I was trying out something else because I don't think it. Hold on. Um, that was a note to myself that I haven't figured out yet. Um, so library SCM tools. I'm still new to R and I'm still learning SCM in R and in general. I'm just giving you some basics here. So rel sat model satisfaction, um, R sat one, two, three, four. Set your satisfaction to um, zero and um, set your mean of the latent variable at zero. So this is just a simple CFA and I wanna look if measurement invariance is happening across gender and gender is what the column is called in my data set. So this has to be um, actually a variable in my data set. And you could run this and it'll tell you whether you have um, measurement invariance across your groups. And I apologize that I had an error, but it's best to just do this measurement invariance anyway. This is like, can you figure out weak invariance, strong invariance, and strict invariance separately? And obviously something is not working. You can specify the loadings, the loadings and the intercepts, the loadings, the intercepts and residuals. But measurement invariance just tells you all of them. Um, fit configural loadings, intercepts, residuals, and finally means, and tells you at what point um, you can look at your CFI for all of them, you can look at your RMSEA for all of them, and make decisions based on that. If you want to learn more about growth curves, there's an awesome HTML um, website there. If you want latent class analysis in R, moderation and mediation, it's there. Um, if the website is discontinued, then I included some of these here. So if you want to go learn more advanced SEM, structural equation modeling topics in R, go check those out. But until then, thank you for listening.